Okay, here's another one of the uh, trees that I'd like to talk about. Also, we not only look at f uh, fruit that kind of was popularized in Europe or the United States, we also look at native Canadian fruit, and this is an example of it. This is uh, the pawpaw. Uh, we used to have uh, large areas of uh, uh, yeah, Ontario and even some regions in Quebec that the native uh, population used to harvest the fruit and uh, found it to be very delicious and we've now started looking into finding really good tasting uh, varieties of these pawpaws. You'll notice that I'm sitting on some wood chips uh, that's because uh, these trees naturally like to grow at the edge of a forest in rich uh, uh, humusy type soil. They can also take a little bit of shade. You'll notice over here we have a, a large uh, tree and it's providing a little bit of shade later in the day. Uh, the reason we like uh, the pawpaws is that uh, first of all the fruit is delicious. It tastes uh, a lot like a, uh, a banana. Uh, it's kind of a custardy uh, fruit uh, inside. Uh, also, it's uh, very, very resistant to disease. You look at the foliage on this uh, tree here, it's absolutely spotless. Uh, they never get attacked by anything. They stay small. Uh, they're easy to grow in uh, northern climates. Uh, in fact, even the plant itself has insecticidal qualities. And all of those reasons, we like it as a, as a backyard tree. And we think down the line, uh, it could have commercial potential. Uh, okay, here we are down in the uh, lower field on the farm. Uh, I just wanted to point out that we really feel that uh, table grapes are an important part of uh, Canadian fruit growing, or at least should be. Uh, presently we have a lot of uh, vineyards producing wine grapes, but there are virtually no vineyards producing table grapes. Yet we import something like 400 million a year in uh, seedless table grapes. And here's our example of a Thompson uh, seedless table grape that's imported. This one, however, has uh, uh, our own uh, variety, experimental variety, the Thompson and Flame seedless that we recognize uh, in the supermarkets are not hardy here. They freeze out every winter. So what we have down behind me is an entire row of experimental table grapes, uh, whether they're red or blue or green. Uh, we're basically looking for one that will mature in our short uh, season and take our cold minus 40 winters. Uh, two winters ago, uh, the Vigneron who takes care of this for me, uh, he put a thermometer in the, in the vineyard hidden in a location that I can't see to bias the results and it was down to about minus 39 in this vineyard two years ago. Last winter it was about minus 30, it was milder than normal, but you'll see uh, again, a pretty full fruit load on most of the experimental varieties. Some of them have names, but most of them are just numbered selections that we're testing. Okay, here we are in our uh, experimental apple orchard. Uh, what we do is we graft uh, some old-fashioned varieties, some of the new varieties out of research stations, and we're trying to find apples that will grow without spray and we do it on a very, very dwarfing rootstock so the apples produce very young and they stay small so we can fit a large number in our experimental plot. Here we have uh, a green apple. If you look at it, uh, we're able to evaluate the apple when the tree is very young. You can see it's only a couple of feet high. Uh, you'll notice the apples have no scab. These have not been sprayed with any pesticide. They have not been sprayed with any fungicide. We have not watered them. We've not fertilized them. We basically want to look at the quality of the apple and then we can uh, graft it onto whatever rootstock we decide to uh, use later on. Uh, this apple is called Landsberger. Uh, it's similar to a Granny Smith. It's a little bit earlier. It's similar in taste. And we have many others you'll see up and down this row. In fact, I've brought one from a little bit further down where one of the other characteristics we look at, if I can get this apple here in front of you, uh, this uh, and this apple, uh, we've chosen not because of the uh, size of the apple, but more the color of the flesh. If I take a second here to open this first apple, this one here is called Purple Passion. And you'll notice if I take a piece of uh, the flesh, 
you'll notice that the apple has a very nice red coloration which will show as red juice if you squeeze it if you make an apple pie uh, the flesh of the pie will be red it has uh, potential as a processing apple it's a bit tart but it makes a great drying apple as well we have several red varieties here's another one this one's called uh, wonder red again you will see if we cut it it has a beautiful red colored flesh Again, uh, useful for processing into pies or sauce, as, al as well as a good eating apple. We have several other apples of, of uh, merit, uh, ones that resist all kinds of apple diseases like apple scab, uh, fire blight, mildew, rust, uh, apples such as Nova Mac, Williams Pride, uh, Freedom, uh, Liberty. Uh, we have pre probably a dozen different apples that have already proven themselves to be very amendable to organic growing conditions.